Hey what's up guys, it's Darkroom Duelist and today we're going to be doing an Ad Emancipator deck profile. I'm really excited to this you guys because I've been wanting to profile this deck for a while but I wanted to get the build just right for you guys and I think I finally have. I really love this deck because it's a really fun deck to just excavate the top 5 off your deck, see what you can dig for and then immediately special summon out those really powerful rock monsters from among the cards that you excavate. This is a deck that I wouldn't hesitate to carry to a locals or even a regionals to compete with because it is a deck that is absolutely crazy consistent and really fun to play around with. So, without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of Notification Squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards, like getting your name description every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single month you're a patron along with test hands. So, without further ado, let's get straight on into it. So first off, we're playing three copies of Ad Emancipator Analyzer. This card is a great three of in the deck because it has the ability that if only your opponent controls a monster, Monster, then you can special summon this card from your hand. And then during the main phase, you can excavate the top five cards of your deck, reveal a level four or lower non-tuner rock monster, place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order, and then special summon out that level four rock monster that you reveal, which is a really good effect to just immediately get a level four rock monster or lower on your side of the field that is a non-tuner because all of your Adamancer Pater main deck monsters are pretty much tuner monsters except for the rocks themselves, which is really nice for this deck to be able to synchro climb and even link climb into some really amazing cards. We then play three copies of Ad Emancipator Researcher that if you control the rock monster then you can special summon this card to your side of the field which is a really good effect to be able to just immediately throw this card on your side of the field and it also shares that ability that you get to excavate the top five of your deck and if you do you can special summon one of the excavated level four lower non-tuner rock monsters from among the cards that you revealed which is really good. We then play three copies of the Ad Emancipator Researcher, or Seeker, excuse me. Seeker is really good because if you control an Ad Emancipator, you can special summon this card to your side of the field, which is a really good follow up play. Once you summon out your copy of your Analyzer or your Researcher, you can then follow up with a copy of Seeker to go in for your final excavation, usually with this particular combo, until you get to your Synchro Monsters. So this card also shares that ability that you excavate the top five, and then if you do, you special summon one excavated level four lower non tuner rock monster from your deck among the ones that you revealed which is pretty good place them on the bottom of the deck in any order and I really love that effect of placing them on the bottom of the deck because it really helps out the deck so you know kind of what you're getting rid of and you know what you're about to draw into if you really know what you're going to be going for in the deck we then play a single copy of Ad Emancipator Crystal Dragite. Dragite is the only non-tuner Ad Emancipator in the main deck. And the reason I play this card is because your copy of your Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite needs a water monster in the graveyard. And it helps out a lot because if this card is special summoned by the effect of an Ad Emancipator card, you get to draw a card. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, or if this card is in the graveyard, you can target a water synchro monster you control or in your graveyard, return it to the extra deck, and if you place this card on the top of the deck, which is really helpful that if if you need to get to your copy of your Ad Emancipator Risen Dragite and it's in the graveyard, you can put it back in the extra deck and then get this card back on the top so you can go in for additional plays. We then play two copies of Doki Doki. Doki Doki is a neat card to draw into or excavate off the top of the deck because it has the ability to discard a rock monster, especially summon from your deck one rock monster with the same original attribute and level as the monster that you discarded in face up attack position or face down defense position, which is a pretty good effect to be able to just summon literally any rock monster that you need. I think this is a fine two of. I have considered playing three, but I always end up not wanting the third one. So I've just kind of stuck with two. We then play three copies of Quakimero's Supplier. Supplier is one of the craziest cards in the entire deck because if a face up rock monster you control is sent to the graveyard, then you can special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is special summon, you can add from your deck to your hand one copy of Iron Core of Quakimero or one card that specifically lists Iron Core of Quakimero from your deck to your hand, which is always going to be your copies of your Quakimero Guardian because Guardian is one of the best cards to search in the entire deck because during the main phase, you have, or during the end, each end invades destroy this card unless you reveal a rock monster in your hand you don't play iron core quacky mirror so you're not even going to worry about that effect but it has the ability that when a monster effect is activated the quick effect you can tribute this card and negate the activation and if you destroy that monster which is a really good effect to be able to just stop monster effects in their tracks with this really powerful monster we then play three copies of roxy because roxy is really good in the deck as well because it's a rock monster 
And it's really easy to link climb with this card in your copy of the uh, Meow Meow Mew. And then finally into Doodle Doo, which is just really good with this card. And if this card is sent to the graveyard as link material for a fusion or a link monster of a prank kids monster, then you can banish one card from your hand. And if you do, you get to draw a card and then you can special summon a prank kids monster from your hand or deck, which is always going to be your copy of Dropsies, which is an additional water monster that you can use in this deck to be able to go in for additional link plays and to back up your copy of Dragite, which is really, really nice for this deck. We then play two copies of Nibiru as well. Nibiru is here is a really good hand trap because it is a rock monster. And if you're going second in this deck, which I usually like to go to second, especially with my copy of Analyzer, being able to special summon itself for free, I like to be able to go into my copy of Nibiru to basically just stop my opponent in their tracks while they're going in for their crazy plays. We then play a single copy of our Plague Spreader Zombie. Plague Spreader Zombie is a good one of because it works really well with our copy of our Needle Fiber, which is why we play this card as a one of in here i really like this card as a one of because it just comes in so handy we then play three copies of parallel xz because parallel xz is really easy to summon to your side of the field especially playing the prank kids engine in here it's super easy to summon to your side of the field go into your copy of galleon granite and then search any rock monster that you need from the deck we then play a single copy of Celestial and a single copy of Dasher to round out the monsters because these cards come in extremely handy in the deck because you're going to be able to go into your copy of Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer really easily, which that card is a really hard card to out and is really amazing once your opponent interrupts you a couple of times. You still have a backup play that you can go into with your copy of Destiny Fusion or your copy of Fusion Destiny, excuse me, and your copy of your Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. And you play a very high monster count in this deck because you want to keep excavating those rock monsters. So for the spells, we're only going to be playing a couple of spells. We're playing a single copy of Monster Reborn because it helps us go in for additional plays. And then three copies of uh, basically the Adam Emancipator monster. Monster Reborn, which is our Ad Emancipator sign. Ad Emancipator sign lets us target a rock monster in the grave, special summon in defense position. Then if you special summon an Ad Emancipator by this effect, you can take a level four lower rock monster and place it on top of your deck, basically letting you get the exact excavate that you want off this card effect. We then play three copies of Fusion Destiny to round out the spells. You're basically playing this card in the deck because you want to be able to summon Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, which is a really powerful boss monster for this deck to be able to play. So that's it for the spells guys let's get into the traps so for the traps i'm playing three copies of infinite impermanence i did debate changing these out for three effect veiler because i can summon the effect veilers off my copies of my needle fiber so i have considered changing them out and playing effect veiler over it i've been bouncing back and forth between ash blossoms effect veilers and infinite impermanences but right now i'm playing infinite impermanences because i like to go second in this deck and so by dropping the copies of infinite impermanence against my opponent backed up with the nibirus you're going to be getting a lot of different plays with this particular card so i like to just stop my opponent in their tracks when i know i can get them right where i want them with the copies of impermanence so that's it for the main deck guys let's get into the extra deck so for the extra deck we're going to be playing a single copy of the ad emancipator risen dragite this card is an insanely powerful card that during the main phase you can excavate the top five of your deck and if you do you can return cards your opponent controls to the hand up to the number of excavated rock monsters and also place the activated cards on the bottom of the deck in any order and when your opponent activates a spell or trap card or effect while you have a water monster in the graveyard quick effect you can negate the activation of you destroy it and you only use each effect of this card once per turn it's a really powerful effect to be on a level eight synchro monster to be able to negate spells and traps and excavate cards and bounce up to five cards on your opponent's field is just insane especially when you hit for the five you're going to be getting a lot of bounces and a lot of problems for the opponent we then play a single copy of adam Emancipator risen raptite raptite is a really good one of because during the main phase you can excavate the top five of your deck and if you do you can special summon one excavated rock monster in defense position doesn't matter if it's a tuner doesn't matter if it's a non-tuner you just get to special summon anything you draw which is really good or excavate excuse me and also place the bot rest of them on the bottom of the deck in any order then during your opponent's turn if a wind monster is in the graveyard you can target one card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. it doesn't come up all the time but it does come up sometimes with your copy of doodle doo and your parallel exceed 
We then play a single copy of Adam Emancipator Risen Leonite. The reason I was talking about with the copies of Infinite Impermanence that I was debating dropping the Infinite Impermanence for Ash is because of Leonite. Because I figured with Leonite, it would give me a fire monster in the graveyard. So that is an option for you guys if you want to change out the Impermanence for Ash Blossom to stop them from searching instead of the monster effects. So the effect of Leonite is during your main phase, you can excavate the top five of your deck. And if you do, you get to add one excavated Adam Emancipator card from those cards that you revealed into your hand, place the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order and during your opponent's turn if a fire monster is in the graveyard quick effect you can target a rock monster in the graveyard and special summon it which is why i did consider playing the ash blossoms in the deck over the copies of impermanence which is an option for you guys if you want to we then play the same copy of baron de fleur because this card is an insanely powerful card to summon to your side of the field it can pop a card once per turn and once while it's on the field it can negate something and also you have the ability that once per turn during the standby phase you can target a level nine or lower monster in the grave return this card to the extra deck and if you do special summon that monster getting back some of your powerful synchro monsters or even a powerful monster that you might need like a copy of analyzer researcher or your copy of seeker back onto your side of the field so you can continue your plays on the following turn once it's already used its negate we then play a single copy of borlode savage because this card just gives us all sorts of negates and this card is an insanely powerful one of in the deck to be able to just work with our copy of needle fiber one copy of appaloosa because it gives us additional monster negates one copy of access code because this card just gives us all sorts of different pops against the opponent so this card is an extremely powerful card one copy of nightmare unicorn because it spins stuff ip mascarena because it lets us link summon during our opponent's turn um needle fiber because needle fiber lets us go in for same plays and it's one of the best extenders in the entire extra deck especially when you link climb on this card and then you summon borload savage and basically equip it with the copy of needle fiber to give it those like insane two counters of negation is just really good uh one copy of anaconda so we can go into our copy of um our copy of destroyer phoenix enforcer one copy of prank kids do do doodle do because this card helps out a lot because if this card is linked someone you can add a prank kid spell or trap from your deck to your hand and you can tribute this card to target two prank kids monsters with different names in the graveyard and then add them to your hand so you can grab back your copy of dropsies and roxies which is the main reason that you're playing this to get the wind monster in the graveyard one copy of meow meow mew because it can basically be a one card with Roxy into your copy of Doo Doo Doodle Doo because it has the ability that it's a link one and it has the ability if a prank is monster you control would be tributed um, or tribute itself or activate its effects uh, except during the dam or except during the opponent's turn then you can manage this card that you control from the graveyard instead which is a pretty good effect um, to be able to go off with. We play a single copy of Gallant Granite as well because it searches rock monsters which is really good in this deck and you mainly make this card with your copies of Parallel Xyz and then finally the big boy our destiny hero destroyer phoenix enforcer this card is so good in this deck i really love this card because it's so easy to put on the field and it's just a great boss monster to throw in with all of your adam emancipator cards and you can get rid of the bricks by putting them on the bottom of the deck and then summoning an anaconda and it's just so good like i cannot emphasize enough how much i love this card in this deck because once your opponent like ash blossoms you and then activates an effect veiler or impermanences you as long as you have two monsters on the field to go for anaconda or you have the destiny uh fusion or the fusion destiny in your hand you can just drop that card to the last card in your hand even if anaconda goes to zero i'm still probably going to play this card in this deck because it's so easy to summon to your side of the field off your copy of uh fusion destiny like it's just such a good boss monster because it gets to pop two cards or pops a card on your field card on your opponent's field it brings itself back during the standby phase and then also makes your opponent's monster loses 400 attack points because you're going to have your copies of celestial and dasher in the graveyard and dasher gives you a free special summon of a monster once per turn which is really good or once while it's in the graveyard if you draw into a monster which the entire deck is monsters so it's really easy to get off that effect of dasher along with this and then Celestial is good too, because you get a draw too. So this card is absolutely insane as a one of in this deck. So that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. It's a really fun deck to play with. I really love Adam Emancipator. It's a deck that I've played ever since this deck was released. And it's just so good. Like I remember when Block Dragon was around, this deck was nuts. And now we have Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, which is just a really good boss monster. It doesn't really replace the Block Dragon, but it does help out a lot to be able to summon out that monster as the last card that you're trying to go into so anyways guys this is dark arm duelist don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on there so you can come part notification squad and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys